Hello and welcome to our daily learning video. Today we're going to learn letter C is for cows. This is what the letter C looks like. Can you say C? C. This is the uppercase C and the lowercase C. And C is for cows. Look at that cute little cow. We're going to decorate the letter C in a fun way today. We're going to cut some paper and glue it onto the letter. So I'm just going to start by putting some glue all the way around on letter C. And then I took scrapbooking paper and cut it into some little pieces. But you could use newspaper or magazine paper. You could use an old coloring book, the paper from that. Use whatever paper you have. You could use candy wrapper paper. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. You can cut different shapes too if you like to. There's a triangle. Most of mine are just rectangles or squares. I think I could squeeze one more right there. Okay, so there you have it. We decorated letter C with pieces of cut paper. Now that we know what C looks like, let's try to write the letter C, okay? To write the letter C, you're just going to curve around like this curve around. Now, if you're using this class for preschool, you might just watch me or you might try to write this on paper or even skywrite it. If you're using this class for pre-K or kindergarten, then you might want to write on some handwriting paper like this handwriting house. So we're going to curve around and since this is a big uppercase letter, we're gonna be upstairs and downstairs on the handwriting house, okay? So let's curve around. Curve around. You try on your paper or on your, whatever kind of paper, on your handwriting paper or your whiteboard. Just curve around. If you don't have any paper, skywrite. Curve around. We're starting near the top, then we're gonna go touch the ceiling, touch the green carpet, and just curve around, just like this. I'll make two more, that gives you a chance to practice. Okay, that's the uppercase letter C, and now let's look at the lowercase c, okay? To make the lowercase c, you just curve around. You're just going to make it a little bit smaller. Since this is a lowercase letter, that means it needs to stay downstairs on the handwriting house. So let's curve around downstairs. Curve around. Make sure you touch the little dotted line and touch the green carpet. Curve around. You can pause right here and make some more letter C's or you can wait and do this for homework. That was our handwriting practice for today. And now we're going to talk about what letter C sounds like. Letter C sounds like this. Can you make that sound? You kind of have to take the back of your tongue and put it up on the top of your mouth. You try it once more. Now for every letter, we have a hand motion. And the hand motion for letter C is this. Can you make two fingers look like scissors? Letter C says, ka, ka, ka. Let's do that again. Letter C says, ka, ka, ka. Keep practicing those letter sounds because pretty soon we're gonna take those letter sounds and put them together and do some reading. Well, I want to show you another word that starts with ka, cows, and also clap. So I'm going to clap out a pattern, and I want you to repeat that, okay? Let's start. Your turn. Good. Let's try another one. Your turn. Very good. You're so good at this. I'm going to do a harder one. Let's see. Oh, here's one. Good. 
Very good. Wow, you're good at clapping and following the pattern. Now we're going to clap if we hear a word that starts with the k, k, k sound. This is a beginning sounds activity. All right, so get ready to clap. The first word is cat. K, k, cat. Yes, cat starts with k. Let's try the next one. Cup. K, k, cup. Very good. Ben. B, B, Ben. No, don't clap for that one. Can. K, K, Can. Yes, Can starts with K, K, K. At. At. No. Cob. K, K, Cob. Yes. Cow, cow, good job. Car, c -c car, yes. Dog, dog, no. Fish, fish, no. Cop, c -c cop, yes. And wow, you did a great job. I'm going to send you a sticker. There it is. It's coming to you. <laughs> great work. That was a red sticker, and that's our color for today, red. But before we do that color time activity we're going to um, I have planned for you today, let's do some math. And for math today, we're going to be looking at this sheet. And I'll put the link below so that you can get a copy of it, too, if you'd like. This is Farmer Brown, and Farmer Brown has one horse right here. So we're going to practice writing the number one. Cows live on farms, and so do horses and other animals, too. We're just making the number one, just falling straight down. Next, let's go over to the handwriting paper portion of the worksheet. And let's see if we can write the number one. We're going to start at the top and fall straight down to the bottom. Right on top of the dotted lines. You can write the number one in word form. And the way that you spell one is O-N-E. Can you spell one? O-N-E. If you'd like to, you can practice writing the word form of number one. Now, down at the bottom, it says to draw one thing. Let's draw an ice cream cone. One ice cream. I think I'll make mine strawberry with a cherry on the top. Do you like sprinkles on your ice cream? Let's make some sprinkles. Wow, this looks really yummy. I wish I had a real ice cream cone right now. What about you? Okay, there's one other thing on this sheet that we need to do, and it's right here. This is called a 10 frame. If you count all the empty spaces, they equal 10. We're going to put one dot on the 10 frame. We'll use the 10 frame a whole bunch more this school year. But for today, I just want you to draw one dot on the 10 frame. Okay, there you have it. That was our math for today. Now we're going to do that color activity we talked about. Our color for this week is red. And did you know that a boy cow is called a bull? And a bull has horns. And bulls do not like to see red. In fact, if you wave something red in front of a bull, it might charge you and it might say moo. So that's what we're going to do for our game today. I'm going to show you some cards. And if it's red, I want you to say moo. But if it's not red, you don't have to say anything. Are you ready? OK, here we go. Moo. Is that red? Moo. 
No, that's not red. Moo. Moo. Those are hot peppers. No, that's not red. Nope. That's green. Green peas. Moo. <laughs> Well, thank you for seeing red today and helping me with that color game. Next, we're going to do some art. And for art today, we're going to make a crown. This is a little cow crown. And we're going to be using our scissor skills. And I'm going to teach you really quickly how to use a pair of scissors. Okay, first of all, I have a pair of scissors that's made for children. Don't try to use a grown up pair of scissors because they're very sharp and they might cut your finger. Also, make sure that you ask a grown up if it's okay for you to use scissors. Now, I want you to give me five. Give me five. <laughs> Good job. Well, when you give me five, the fingers that are at the top are going to go into this larger hole on the scissors. So do it again. Give me five. Take all of these fingers and let's put them into the bigger hole on the scissors, okay? Now there's a smaller hole here and that's for our thumb. And my thumb is so dirty because we're gonna do science and that's food coloring. We're gonna do that science experiment in just a moment. So that's where our thumb goes into the smaller hole. Now I'm going to open my hand and guess what? The scissors open. When I close my hand, the scissors close. Open and close. Open and close. That's the way you cut with scissors. Now we're going to cut some straight lines on just a plain piece of paper. So I'm going to open and close, open and close all the way down. Cutting takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get better and better at it. So I have one strip and I'm going to cut another strip. Open and close. Open and close, keep going all the way down. This is the perfect project for beginning scissor skills because we're just making all these straight lines, except for the cow ears. Let me show you again what they look like. May need a grown up to help you on this part or I'll show you how I'm gonna make my ears. I'm just going to curve around this way and curve around the other way and leave a little point on the top. That's one cow ear. I'll cut out two of these. I'll go ahead and do it so you can see. One, two, they don't have to be perfect. Now I'm going to take these two cow ears and I'm going to glue them to the strip that I cut already. And then I'm going to glue the other strip to the side like that, just to make it longer. And then you can come around and glue it like that so that it makes a crown, a cow crown. C is for cow and C is for crown. And that's our art project for today. For science, we're going to learn about how we get milk from cows. Now, I have a video that is incredible and I'm going to put the link below. That video is about five minutes long and if you pause this and watch that or even watch that later, you'll learn all about how cows give us milk. Now we're going to do a science experiment. So after you watch the video, if you choose to, you can come back and let's do a science experiment using milk right now. For this science experiment, we're going to be using some milk. I'm just pouring some milk into a plate. Next, I'm going to add some food coloring. Now, where I am, it's hard to find regular food coloring. This is gel food coloring. You can still make this kind of food coloring work. Just mix it with a little bit of water. Now I'm going to just drop the food coloring. I'm gonna make sure that I mix that really well. You're gonna just drop it onto the milk. If you get too much water, that's what happens. It really starts to spread. So if you do use the gel, try not to 
use a lot of um, water in it. And it really works best if you can use the regular food coloring if you can find it. But this will still be fine. We'll still get to see the effect. Okay, so I just dropped some food coloring and it's kind of stayed together. All the red kind of stayed here and this orange and yellow stayed together. But I'm going to try to make them spread out. And the way I'm going to do that is add just a little bit of dish liquid. I'm just putting some dish liquid onto a Q-tip and I'm going to touch the Q-tip and watch what happens when I do. Whoa, it spreads out. Let's try it over here. That's pretty cool. That's because mole there are molecules in the milk and when they touch the solution, the dish solution, they spread out and they take the colors with them. So this is pretty cool. You can even try it and see what happens if you just drop the dish liquid right onto the milk. Wow, that really makes it spread out. So have some fun. You've probably seen this before online. It's called Magic Milk Science Experiment. And now I'm going to come around and read a story for you for story time. For story time today, we're going to be reading one of my favorite farm story books. It's called The Cows Said Nay, a farm story by Rory Feek. There once was a cow in a barn who could see a horse in a field who ran wild and free. If I were a horse, I could run free all day. And the cow opened his mouth and let out a big neigh. The horse heard the cow and he looked in the pond at the duck with the bill who swam all day long. If I were a duck, bet they'd stay off my back. And the horse reared back and out came a quack. The duck heard the horse and he saw the sheep with a big winter coat two inches deep. If I were a sheep, that would be great. And the duck said, bah, as loud as he could. I itched, that would be good. And the duck said, bah, as loud as he could. The sheep heard the duck and he looked at the pig using his nose in the deep mud to dig. If I were a pig, I could dig with my snout. And the sheep opened his mouth and then oink came out. The pig heard the sheep and he looked in the yard at the dog on the porch who proudly stood guard. If I were a dog, I bet I could be tough. And the pig wiggled his tail and he let out a ruff. The dog heard the pig and he looked in the house at the cat on the rug that was chasing a mouse. If I were a cat, I'd be inside right now. And the dog opened his mouth and let out a meow. The cat heard the dog and he left the mouse there and looked at the farmer asleep in his chair. If I were a man, oh, the places I'd go. And then the cat purred and let out a hello. <gasps> the farmer opened his eyes when he heard the cat and he thought to himself, did I really hear that? Then he walked to the barn and he opened the door and heard some more things he'd not heard before. The cow said, nay, and the horse said, quack. The duck said, bah, and the sheep oinked back. The pig said, woof, and the dog said, meow, as the cat and the farmer stood by the cow. Then the farmer smiled, what else could he do but open his mouth and let out a big moo. <laughs> That was a really cool story, the end. Well, I hope you've had a really cool time today. C is for cool. So come on out. I want you to tell us what we're gonna learn about tomorrow. And by the way, would you like to wear my cow crown? Oh, that looks cute on you. Well, tomorrow we're going to learn about dinosaurs. Is that right, Sue? D is for dinosaurs. So I hope you'll join me again tomorrow. Goodbye.